Need some help with number seven? I got you. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a similar type of problem with different numbers. Don't copy down the exact numbers I use, but use the same method, the same idea, the same thinking. So if I wanted, my goal is to have $28,200, okay, after 20 years in the account that I chose in question five, and in my case, I chose my CD account because I really like that one. I like that it had a higher rate even though I couldn't touch the money for a while. What rate would my account need to grow at? So I'm choosing the CD account, but let's say I want to choose a different CD account. I want to find one that has a different rate because I don't know the rate, okay? And my goal is to have my money grow to 28,200. So that's what I want to have at the end after 20 years. So I'm starting with the same 25,000, oh sorry, 15,000, that I've been starting with in all these problems, but I wanted to grow to 28,200. Woo, that's a lot of money in 20 years. So that's a long time. So because the CD account is compounded monthly, I know I'm using the compound formula. Okay, so let's go through each letter here and I'm gonna identify what each one is. So Y is the total after at the end. So it's the total at the end of the 20 years and my goal, my end goal is to have $28,200. So that's my end goal is that I want to have that much money in the account. So that's the total at the end. Next, the P, that's the principal or initial. So how much did I start with in the account? Well, I started with the $15,000 that my long lost uncle gave me. We all started with that amount. Woohoo, thank God for him. That was my initial investment. R, what is the rate in this problem? Ooh, that was the question that they said. What rate? So therefore, I don't know the rate. That's going to stay R. Next is the N. N is how many times it's compounded. So I have to look for the word compounded, come back up here, and I look for that word, and I see it right here, compounded monthly. So I come back down here for monthly, and monthly is right here, and it says 12. So that means my N is going to be 12 because it's compounded monthly. And lastly is how long. So what is the time in years? Well, 20 years it said. So I'm putting 20 in for years. So now I'm going to write out the equation exactly as we see it, plugging in these numbers. I start with Y equals, but for Y, I put that number. So I start with 28,200 equals. That comes next. P and then parentheses. So this is my P. So I put that in parentheses one plus. So I'm just going through this equation one thing at a time. One plus. Next is the R over N. I don't know the R, so that's gonna be R. That's my variable. Over N, we said that N is 12 because that's how many times it's compounded. And in the exponent, I have NT. So again, the N is 12 times the time, which is 20 years. Okay, so now I have my equation. I'm going to slide this over because we plugged in. We know what it is. And now I'm going to solve it. So this is the same thing that you practiced in Delta Math. And this is the power equation. But I want to simplify this before I do anything else. So you know me, I like my wall. Ah, that was the ugliest wall ever. So I'm going to bring everything down. And I just multiply 12 times 20. And it's 240. So that's going to be the simplified exponent. Notice that whenever I write an exponent, I write it high and I write it smaller. So it's up top here. I, my goal is to get that base and that exponent by itself. So I want to get this by itself, the bottom of the exponent and the exponent. And so that means I got to get rid of that 15,000. So because it's being multiplied, I'm going to divide it. That's the opposite of multiplication. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So I divide 28,200 divided by 15,000 and I get 1.88. Now remember, when you do this, your numbers are going to be different, so please don't write the same numbers that I have. 
15,000 over 15,000, that cancels. Awesome. I bring down one plus everything that I see there. I don't change anything. Every step you just bring down, bring down, bring down. To get r by itself, I need to get rid of the exponent. So we learned in power equations that to get rid of an exponent, you do the reciprocal. 1 over 240, because it's 240 here, and they're going to cancel out if it's on top and bottom. So I put the parentheses. It has to go on the right side, where exponents always go, and I write the exact same thing on both sides. So once again, look at that exponent. I put the exact same thing on both sides. And the reason I do that is because on this side, the 240 and 1 over 240 cancel. So now I'm getting much closer to r being alone. I'm almost there. I put this in my calculator and make sure you're using a Desmos calculator. Do not use your iPhone. And I write out the whole number with six decimal places or more. All right, so nice long decimal. My goal is to get r by itself, so let's keep going. I want to get r by itself, so I need to get rid of that 1. Because the 1 is positive, I subtract it on both sides. So now this leaves me with 0 0.0026337 equals, that cancels, r over 12. I'm so close. R is almost by itself. All I have to do now is get rid of that divided by 12. What's the opposite of divided? Multiply. So I multiply by 12 and whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Divide and multiply cancel and r is by itself. I'm so happy. Multiply that by 12 and I end up with 0 0.031605. Remember, six decimal places or more. Um, but I need it as a percent. So to turn it into a percent, you multiply times 100. So I'm going to multiply this times 100, and I get 3.1605. Point one six zero five equals the rate, and when I round it to the nearest tenths place, that's the first number after the decimal, the 6 tells the 1 to go up, so mine becomes 3.2%, and that would be my rate. So I would need a CD account that grows at 3.2%. Were there any CD accounts that were that high? Let's go back and look, because then we can tell if we'll ever be able to grow our money up that much, all the way up to 28,200. Go practice now with your numbers and see how, what rate would you need to raise your money up to 25,000.